All right, so for the 39 people that we have right here, I appreciate you, well, 42. Appreciate you coming on, and we about to get into a little menswear. We about to get into the whole DIY world, and um, specifically the menswear within that. So, like I said earlier, um, it's rare to find someone that does the exact same thing that I do, because not only is the DIY world like a niche market, Within that, we don't see too many men doing it. So when I see a cool cat like you, you know what I'm saying, I reach out. And we got history. You know, we both we went to SS, SSU together. Um, but I just want to start off, man, how did you get behind the sewing machine? And how did you start designing and just making your own pieces? Um, so similar to you, I was, excuse me, similar to you, I was, uh, I was styling. OK. I had a styling gig and then from there, like I met a lady on set and she was like, yo, you should meet the guy who I rent out the studio with. So I ended up meeting a guy by the name of Tory Designs who was like, to me is a legend. He's a that beast. Man, that man is a beast. To me, he the, he the best to, to do it. He's been sewing since he was 10. He's from, right. he's from Ghana. Got um, you. So when I met him, I met him on some like, yo, this is, hey, hey, Hassan, Tory, you know, meet Brian. And I was like, cool. So we chopped it up and we clicked right away. Like, within the first five minutes, we clicked. Kind of okay. how we, we both Gemini. Um, so we clicked right away. And Got then, um, like, before I was leaving, I was like, I was like, bro, I would love to come and see some more. Like, because, once again, I'm in New York. Everybody's a damn stylist in New York. And, you know, right. I wanted to, like, I Same wanted to have something. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to have something that'll, like, set me apart a little bit to where, like, maybe I can do small alterations. So it was just dope. I was just, like, fascinated. And then, like, the same day, it was like a summer day, and I, I was like, I, I was like, bro, I'd love to come see, you know, watch you work sometimes. He was like, shit, come on. I was like, don't yeah. say that. I'll be, I'll be here every day. Don't say that. Yeah. He was like, he was like, no, nah, no, nah, come on. So I, I, I feel like he said that, thinking that I wasn't like people say that to him all the time, and they don't, right. they don't pull up. They're not really invested in it. Like it's cool. But you you pull it up on. But it. they, yeah, but they don't like, like you know, when you sew, it's, it's a lot. You got to have a lot of patience. You got to be putting a lot of work. Just so I, started, I just started pulling up, pulling up. Okay. So then I kept pulling up and it, it went for me watching, for me watching. And I'm watching every day, doing small little alterations. Then, it, then like, so he got two machines like in his space. So it went for me watching to, to me like, yo, why you don't try this out real quick? So then I started trying stuff out. And okay. then over time, I st like he would be working for his clients and I would be there hanging out, learning, watching. And then it started to like, yo, sew this lining together real quick for me. I'm, I'm in a rush. Okay. Can you, put, can you put the lining together? Boom, here the pattern. Like he, you know, he cut real fast. And then it went from that to me sewing the lining together. I'm like, damn. So I just kept going. And then I started doing my own alteration, like Dang. making my own pieces. So really it was just like a lot of time and like a lot of, a lot of energy that I just like you gotcha. know, put into it. So I think like I've been... Like that's like at this point, like we we family. Like I've been, when he got married. I was at the wedding. Like we family gotcha. at this point. Me and him, like just like I said, we clicked right away. And so what, was, what year was this? What year was this? This is twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Yeah. Dang. This is okay. twenty sixteen. Around the same time I started, right, baby? Yeah. yeah. This is twenty sixteen, but like when I say every day, I was like I was every day. If I ain't have a like, you know. Styling gigs can be hard. Like I don't have no agent, no manager, no nothing like that. So like, it gotcha. be hard. So when it's downtime, like it wasn't no downtime. So me, I'm like, in the most humblest of ways, like I feel like I can always get fresh. So, gotcha. Like, <laughs> and I can always watch, you know, watch trends and like study fashion, this, that, and the other. Because like I didn't go to school for this. I went to school to right know, for um for marketing. Hey, some so, some people some people ask um James Anthony as. Who are you talking about? So it's for some people that just came on, let them know who you're talking about again. Okay, so I'm talking about my, my mentor in uh, design and so on, which is uh, Torrey Designs. You can look him Torrey up. Designs, look him up. Yeah, he, he's done like some phenomenal, crazy work. And it's so crazy, like I'll be in there, like we'll be talking and I'll, I'll, get, so, I'll get so caught up and, and I'll just be like, oh, like, wow. Cause like, I'm from, <laughs> yeah. I'm from Atlanta, so I might yeah. be like, I, I might see like this Rocco cover with Rocco leaning leaning on the car on the uh -huh. old school car. He got on the, the big long coat, the fur, and I'm like, I'm like, why you got this picture? He's like, bro, I did the coat. I'm like, <laughs> I 
see the I see the young Jeezy double XL, the Ooh. you know, K Man the Snowman. Him. And he like, I did the coat. You yeah. see Trey Songs, he's like, I'm like, I see Tony Robbins. I'm like, Tony Robbins, like the motivational speaker. He's like, Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, I went to his house. Yeah, I did I did hit, I'm doing coats for him. So I'm but just lacing like, everybody up. But he's so like I feel you know, I, at the same time, I feel like in the industry, people are with him, he posed such a threat because he's like he he's so he's so magical with his hands that like right you know he he doing really well for himself but gotcha. as far as him being as big as like you know people are real small minded they want all those big fashion houses that have been around for hundreds of years or whatever but um nah that's that's my that's my brother he like he really didn't as a poet like for me going in there like because you see stylists they'll come in there and they'll be like hey we need a custom piece for this artist da 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 and instead of me like asking for fish like i was like shit teach me how to fish right and then that's right, how it right. did, that's how it happened that's what's up man and it, it made it easier for you because he already had the space right he had so, the space, like, he had the machines and it was so much love. it was so much love it was so crazy like it was so like because you know in this industry it's cutthroat you know it's not it's not a whole lot of love in it you know and, and um like my wife would say something like people aren't People aren't out to get you. They only, you know, they they out for themselves. Okay. So I'm like, damn. But with him, like it was just, like I said, it was just love. Like, yeah. Come on, bro. I'm like, what? I mean, it, I mean, you always gonna have industry, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it was just good to meet someone that was genuine and was able to allow you to use the space and time. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we got similar stories because when I first started, it was it wasn't like a, a mentor. It was like my wife. Mm -hmm. and mentor well at the time my girl yeah and um, and and obviously I, I came from the i came from the world of styling too you know so everybody in la is a stylist and um we just pretty much started you know what I'm saying lacing clients and then once we got to a point where uh, we had our own brand we were just pushing that and then yeah we, we got all the you know what I'm saying tv stuff but once it came down to me, me, my wife, I was just fascinated that she could take fabric and just make something three dimensional, three um, dimensional with it. Right. And, and I didn't have to go out and buy material. I didn't have to buy a machine. She had everything right there. So it made it, it's kind of similar to you. It's like, it made it easier for us to just learn. Right. But uh, we know that everybody don't have, you know, sanatorial designs or a Mimi G style like I had. So mm -hmm. like, what, what, what would you tell guys now that are interested in like learning the soul, you know what I'm saying? Especially from, you know what I'm saying? Like you from, you from Atlanta, right? Yeah. I'm a Grady baby. Yeah. So you, you from, you from the A, you living up in New York. Um, you got that, you know what I'm saying? That Southern swag. And there's a lot of people that follow us from the South. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people from college, a lot of people from right. your high schools, like from a lot of people from your neighborhoods, people that look right. just like us, that sound like us. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Well, what kind of advice do you get, give them that don't have someone directly, you know what I'm saying? That they can go to and look at. As far as like trying to sew and get into just trying design. to just learning learning anything behind behind the sewing machine or pattern making or just something technical. Um. Uh, I, I guess like you just you gotta really want shit. Like <laughs> that's pretty much it. Like if, <laughs> gotcha. it, like if you want something bad enough, you'll go get it. Like <laughs> right, 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 people, right. Like and that's one three. That's one reason why. Like first of all, I don't feel like I'm in a I'm in a position to like have an intern or whatever. But like right. You gotta, you gotta be crazy enough to want something really bad, and like, when I told bro, like I'll come every, like I'll come every day, like, right, I'm, I'm about it, like I'll come every day. I'm sure he told me, yeah, like thinking like, oh, he'll come a couple times, and I won't see him, cause like yeah. since I've been with him for four years, like, it's so crazy to the point to where like being with him and him being such a legend, like now my face card good in the, in the, in the garment district, gotcha. like garment district clothes, and they people, you know, it's stores that'll open up and be like, oh yeah, come on, B. But that's off the strength of him. And they didn't see me with him for four years. You know what I mean? So like gotcha. for me to like just invest all my time, energy, like maxing out credit cards, because like shit, I might not be working, but shit, let me go buy this fabric real quick and try to make something or try to I'm just try learn to my it. craft. So it's like something. it's like shit, like Nipsey said, all money in. Like I'm I'm all the way invested. So if you really want to do something, if you don't have anybody or if you do, you'll do it. Whether you're on YouTube. Whether you're buying, um, I know you guys have like you got dope man so I know you got the the sewing little uh, classes that you can subscribe to. Um, yeah. If you really want to, because people hit me like, yo, yeah, I'm like, I, and I tell them all the time, I was like, 
I send them your page, like, yo, my bro, my bro got something online for you to sign <laughs> got on. Got you. Yeah. Because, like, I, I don't. And at the right, same right, time, right. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to take no intern because, like, shoot, like, like, Torrey probably thought, people, people don't be serious. They don't really be, they don't really be about it. Right. So, so I don't have time, like, if, and somebody will say, like, yo, I'm in Atlanta. I'll come up there for two weeks. I'll come up there once a month or that don't benefit me or you. And that, and really that's not fair to me gotcha. for me to stop everything for you to just like follow me. Like, that's why I don't do like, like interns. Now, if it was somebody who, who was like me and was like, nah, I do it every day. Like you gotta be really willing to lose some shit in order to gain some shit. Gotcha. I'm sorry. I probably don't know. Oh, so no, 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 no. You good. You good. <laughs> so I'm, I'm reading comments. I'm reading comments. Hey, listen to everybody. I, I got a college degree. I just, <laughs> I just work for myself now, so I just talk crazy. <laughs> oh, you good, man. <laughs> it's open conversation, bro. All right. I, you um, know, some, I ain't um, want to be out of, trying to censor from it. Queen, and from Queen to you, this is my, big, my especially King. not working for some reason. A lot from young boys think sewing just for girls. What do you what, what do you say to that comment? Like, a lot of people, a lot of guys might think that, you know, uh, for some yeah, reason. I'm sure. And I can see why, because that shit take a lot of patience and and... <laughs> I'm not male bashing, but you know, a lot of us guys, we sorry. We ain't, we don't have time. We're not patient. Yeah. Like, it takes a lot of patience to do this shit. So, like, I can see why they would say that. But, um, but how, how do you I, combat a comment like that? Because obviously we do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't entertain shit like that. Like, it's just small minded and ignorance. I'm from yeah. Atlanta. It's, it's, uh, unfortunately, the South is really small minded. Um, yeah. I just, I don't care enough to entertain questions like that. But it's not just like I got uncles who are mentally men and they bake, they bake cakes, they have bake offs. Like that's just what they do. So gotcha. like I don't, you can't really, to me, you can't put gender on something. That's like saying, that's that's just ignorant saying like, oh, females should be playing basketball or like. It's, to me, it's the same thing. Like you. So true, man. We we gotta. Do the fuck we, you we, do? That's true, man. We 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 got we gotta let especially young guys know. You know, what I'm saying that whole stigma of like an uh, old grandma yeah. sewing is like. Yeah. That's so outdated. I mean, their, their eyes, their people, listen, people's eyes light up once they see some shit that you done did or yeah. or you were a part of or something like that. Then it's like, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I want to yeah. know how to do it. It's not yeah. like, oh, that's for but girls. You, you know, one thing that I think of is like, I wouldn't have known how big this industry was if if not me seeing my wife involved in it. And I'm like, Oh, okay. yeah, she, I mean, but clearly she big. She, you know, <laughs> right. She big. Yeah. Now, if it, was, if it was a hobby for her, you probably still wouldn't, you wouldn't have known. Right, right. If it was right. just her hobby, you wouldn't have known. I, just have been, cool. I, did, I didn't see it. I didn't physically see someone doing it. I know somebody made it. I knew it mm -hmm. came from, from some manufacturing or whatever it was, but I didn't know the industry was that big. So right. once I started learning, I was like, okay, cool. She going to go into the pattern store. Let me go to me. I can find me some. Right. So like, it's like she got like 20, 30, 30 patterns in her hand, and they all mm -hmm. fire. They all heat. And some of them ain't as much heat, but she can do something with it and freak it and make yeah. it better. So I'm going to I'm gonna I'm gonna tell I you through. something with me and patterns, like, because, like, which is kind of like a disadvantage to me is that I, like, I've been learning under a legend who's been doing this shit since he was a kid. So, like, he's so cold, he can freestyle a pattern with some scissors and chalk. Gotcha. Like, that's how I called it. So like, I was like, when I first made like my first jacket and like first patterns, like it was kind of like a freestyle pattern. Like, yeah. unless I make a dress, like I don't really go to purchase a pattern unless I'm making a dress. Okay. So if gotcha. I make a dress, because like, I, I I can't try it on or nothing like that, or I'm right, not right. sure how like the body is shaped, I'll go buy a pattern. But funny enough, every time I go in there to buy a pattern, I see y'all on the, all over the place. But, um, I mean, I'm you not... probably see most. You probably see mostly her. Yeah, I, I see <laughs> you a see a little bit of me, of but you see mostly her. <laughs> I see a combination of both of y'all. Yo, man. Um. So. So I want to hit you up, man, because a lot of people really don't know too much about the the, the entire um, industry, right? So, um, there's a whole community for those that don't know that people go out, they purchase patterns, they go home, and they make. Their, their patterns at home or they, they make their garments at home and a lot of people are really good they can alter them you know what i'm saying so that's that's a little bit of pattern making skills um you you can um 
you you can um you can combine two different patterns you know what i'm saying and freaking like that and, and there's just a list of things that you can do like at, like at home and when i when i first started going out like i said earlier my wife would have like 20 30 patterns in her hand and i would go look and see how many patterns i could get and mm -hmm. I, I might could find one and that one i just happens to be in my size there's no no more extra and right. it's something that I'm not really crazy about, but I see the line drawing on the back because my wife said, if you can see the line drawing, you basically can like envision what you can do with it. So right. that's that's a tip that I always take and I, and I do that first. And it just opens up more ideas because I can see things without actually seeing it. But a lot of people can't do that. A lot right. of people haven't came from like the, 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 the fashion wardrobe style and mm -hmm. industry and merged into garment making. You see what right. I'm saying? Some people might not be in the industry at all and they want to make their own clothes, you know? So I think one thing to give like young people advice, um, young young people in general, would probably be kind of do similar things that we did, but kind of maybe maybe go to like a tailor shop. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And like and if you want to like have hands on. Right. Or that's uh, what all these design these designers these days are doing or taking to Taylor and having them create it for him. That's what I used to do. That's what I used to do. You know, yeah. I mean, if I yeah, wanted I, to. I, I, yeah, I seen a video with you, with you, with you and your man, like an old video back in the day, and y'all uh, was taking it to somebody and getting your know, like. We would pick up fabric. We will go to the tailor. When we know what construction was involved, we just knew you could probably do it because you, right. you, you, you were Taylor, and right. um, and uh, they only spoke Spanish, so the, the English and the Spanish was kind of broken, but we made it. We communicated through the fashion. And yeah, um, we had we had some dope stuff, man. Um, um, so so you've been sewing what? Right at what? Four years now? Yeah, about four years. Well, what's what's been your biggest challenge, man? Um, from from a male's perspective, my biggest challenge, yeah. like as, as far as the machine, or just like over over just anything, the, anything in general. Um, I had, I don't know. I don't know. I know, like, I think for, for like, season 18 of Project Runway, it's an NDA, I'm not going to be saying all of this, but uh, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> I, I was, like, a semi-finalist, like, to where I had the panel interview um, okay. for, for Project Runway. So this is, like, I had the phone interview. I had the face-to-face -face interview. I had the, where I, where I went in on, on the camera, and I had to, like, bring in garments or whatnot. And of course, this was, like, a women's collection that I did. And then I had another panel interview with Project Runway. I think I want to say it was season eighteen or nineteen. I don't even know. I don't. They weren't too fond of me because like I, I really haven't watched the full season of Project Runway, and I was honest about right. it. Like I, I it was like, Shh, it just doesn't interest me. There's nobody like me on the show. I didn't feel like. So yeah. um, I think that was like probably my my most difficult thing um, because I had to like. I don't have overhead, so I don't have like female pieces that I've made just laying around. I just don't. So the actual the actual female collection was one of your challenges. Yeah, yeah, because okay. it went from it went from them contacting me Friday afternoon and saying that they would meet with me on Monday and they wanted to see um, a five piece collection um, to show them in person in in hand uh, on that Monday. So, so what that you was made? like. So what you made? Um, I made this. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen that I did. It's like the um, like the tactical kind of like piece of um, puff denim uh, vest for women, and then I made okay. like this puff this puff two piece skirt that like wrapped around with um, Velcro and had like the zipper up one side, Velcro wrap on the other side. I made a, um, a V crop women's uh, fatigue jacket. Okay. Um, I made a long denim uh, a denim gown that was like real. It was real kind of like, it was real denim. So like I had my rivets like that or on jeans, like to, to mark, to, to mark the points, like on the hip for the, for the, uh, for the dress to like mark around the breast. Um, and then I had like two uh, uh, eyelets, like two large eyelets on the chest, like here and here. Okay. And then I had, I had a neoprene um, skirt that zipped all the way up, but it was kind of like asymmetrical. So it like cropped in the front and like dipped back in the back. And then I made um, a pullover shirt that was made out of um, an embossed nylon. So the embossed nylon looked like snake. 
Okay. So like from, from so from a distance it looked like leather, and then when you get up you see it's like a windbreaker nylon that was actually embossed snake, which oh, was nice. super fire, the super okay. fire, and it had like the zip up the uh, the back, like a large wide tactical zipper up the back, and then I made I don't know I want to say some like shorts out of the same like um, embossed windbreaker. That's but what's up, man. I did that shit like over the weekend, which was like it was it was it was kind of impressive. That's tough, to man. Me. Yeah, like, I didn't really like. It felt good to see what I have had learned because, like, I I don't sit around like making female stuff, but right, like I made some like some dope pieces that are like on it's on one of my pages, but um, I think I sold I sold some of it, sold some okay. of it, cut up some of it, but it was cool. Like, it, I I love the experience, the experience, and I think like this was I talked to Project Runway actually two years in a row. This was this was like last year. Okay. And then they sent me an email a couple couple months ago. I left their ass on scene. They ain't finna do me that again. Like I ain't gonna talk to <laughs> Got you. Got you, got you, got you. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the wife. She said that, that dinner dress sounds sounds fire. <laughs> it was, it was cool, wanna... like it was cool. You like, might want to take some orders of that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, so Oh, also, so, you know, like, I'm making masks right now, and somebody asked me, like, do you have any, like, kind of feminine patterns of, of your mask? And it's, like, a lot of the stuff I do is so unisex that, yeah. like, when I was creating, like, a collection that I wanted to be unisex. Okay. Um, what, I guess that all goes back to, like, oh, only women. So, like, nah, I wanted to have something that was, like, um, like gender-free and that anybody could wear, whether it be, like, real crop boxy type stuff that wouldn't yeah. be too masculine or too right. feminine. Yeah. Um, so like, so when I buy fabric, I kind of buy it the same way. That way, like, if I wanted to make shorts like this, it'd also be a fire ass pant for a female. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, that's that's just me and, um, and how I buy my textiles. So like, so when people are buying these little uh, PPEs for me right now, it's all going to be kind of like a unisex friendly um, fabric. Bro, so your man's be like, dope, boy. Your I man's fire. I appreciate it. I, appreciate I was it. like, man, babe, what the hell he getting the fabric from? <laughs> yeah, I, like some of, some of it was given to me. Some Nike check going across you like a smile. I'm like, bro. Oh yeah, where, yeah, yeah. Some where he freaking it's cool. is at? <laughs> Listen, this, this has been a this has been a, a blessing in disguise for real because like I've been able to have some peace and make some good money. Um, yeah, it's been cool. That's what's up, man. So like you you talking about women's women's wear and all that stuff. Um, where like what's your creative process when it comes to to a lot of these pieces that you do on a lot of these menswear pieces you do because obviously you know the industry don't cater to us as much and you're fortunate enough to like make your own patterns so like yeah. what's like what's your process do you find the fabric first or do you like have an idea what you want what you want to what you want to make or do you just start making some and then you just build it on build it as you go because I, I do a little bit of all of it yeah, I'm, I would say I do the same thing. It's not really like a set technique or where like, oh, I'm looking for a pattern or it's kind of like, I want some, like sometimes, some, like it might just be a day where like, especially in the summertime, I, I feel like I have a lot of fun. I might just be like, man, I want some shorts. And like, I got, I still got kind of like this athletic build. So like, uh, I'm trying to say this the most politically correct. Like my waist isn't as big as my ass and my thigh. So it's like, <laughs> got you. I got to like, alter anything I buy anyway. Right, exactly. So, um, so um, I, sometimes I just be like, shit, I want some shorts. And then I go looking for, like, just browsing through the fabric store and I find something fire or something dope that I, and I just go with it from there. Um, but I, it's no, like, I don't know. I guess, I guess because, like, I guess because, like, I consider myself a true creative. Like, it ain't no fucking mood board I'm looking at or no, like, oh, this is what's cool. Or I saw somebody, like, I don't even really watch other designers um, just because uh, there's a thin line between imitation and influence, right? Okay. So, like, I respect a lot of people in their work, but sometimes I prefer not to watch them because, like, I don't want to, like, cross that thin line. And it's not, and it's, I guess that's just. Without you even knowing it. That's what yeah, yeah, because 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 it, it can happen. It can happen. I mean, if you look, if you go through these designer stores, like a lot of the shit looks the same, and they're yeah. all doing the same thing. And it, and some of it's from like fashion shows, like with there being themes and like if you're Paris Fashion Week, there's a theme, so all of that shit is gonna look the same. Right. So like, the only time I, I do that, the only time I make something that I've seen on runway or seen as I do, 
I'd be like, man, I wonder if I could do it. If I wonder if I could make it. If it oh, looks yeah, yeah. technical or it looks, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, man, let me see if I can do that myself. And if right. I do it, I'm like, oh, man, like, it, it'll, okay. it just make me feel good. But in the process, I'm always switching it up. So um, right. that, that, that rarely ever happens to, to me. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I can man. See that. So, yeah, bro. So, um, like I said earlier, we both went to Savannah State. SSU. Hey, listen. Listen, we go back. People we don't go know. back, bro. Listen, we were in Bowen Smith. In the, in the, oh, in you, one of those. yeah, yes. You, you was on the fourth floor. I was on the fifth floor. Yeah. Did, I mean, you, get, we, did you get a cut from me? Because I was lacing people up back then. You, you were cutting. I don't think you ever cut me. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. Um, you were cutting back then. I don't know. I think – I forgot. I, I, I remember coming to your room one time and you was cutting somebody and you had, like, the – you had the rack of, of, of the, the throwback jerseys in that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. I, I ain't gonna give things away, man. But yeah, I, I had it. I, I was had them up. I wish you still had them joints. But nah, nah, listen. And that's shit. A lot of us learn how to like I know although like I have I have my degree in business marketing and like I, I went yeah. I went the whole route of being a banker for some time. Um like I learned shit, just how to survive in college. Like yeah, fucking we all had a George Foreman girl under our bed, knowing we ain't supposed to have that bit. <laughs> right. And look, and look, your partner standing in the hallway while y'all fucking grilling hot dogs and shit. So <laughs> we just learned how to survive because we had to like <laughs> we had to get it. So like, like shit, yeah. like quarantine is totally different. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm 33 with a little with 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 you know eight with the means of buying groceries. Bowen Smith shit was crazy though. That shit. Yeah. You remember when it? Hey, you remember when the when the um when the AC went out in that bitch and it was so hot and nobody slept that whole night. You don't remember that? Um, oh, you, see, you might have been off campus somewhere um, or creeping I, I somewhere. What, was it on the weekend? You might have been creeping somewhere. <laughs> was it on the weekend or was it on campus? It was the weekend. You probably. Oh yeah, I dipped every weekend that first year. Yeah, I, I went there, bro. I went there. Um, what what I'm about to ask you? So, so um, e hey, e even though even though I knew you back then, I didn't know that you was like into fashion like that. So like when I found when I saw that you was a stylist, and then I found out you was making stuff, I'm like, hold on, like you, it, it didn't even it didn't even click. Like, oh man. Like how did you how did you how did you move more into like fashion? Cause I didn't even know you was into it like that. I can't hear none. His Wi Fi is being goofy. I think your Wi Fi is being goofy, bro. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. You see, they saying it's you. Hey, I'm not right to come in. Appreciate that, Sean. We can't either. Oh, they can't see you either. So what should I do, baby? Nothing, baby. Just stay on. Just talk to them. Oh, okay. So you can get back on. Or ignores. Let me let me let me see that I got some questions. Okay, hold on. I think he back. Oh, my bad. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boom, let's do it. Let me see. Shout out to my boy John Milan is on here. I saw you come here, John. I couldn't I couldn't it say could, it, I'm not even by my router, bro. You ain't by your router? No, nah, I'm downstairs in my lobby. This this look, I'm in my lobby. Of my apartment building. Well, that's what it is then. That's exactly right. what it is. Listen, listen. I'm an adult. I, I can be accountable. <laughs> it, it could be me. I right, bet. All right. That's all, <laughs> hey, that's, all, I, that's all I wanted to hear. You know what I'm saying? It could they be me. were going ham on me earlier. Yeah, we were. So, we were, um, we were. So you said, so you said, how did I, um, how did I get into the fashion? Yeah, how right? you get like into fashion? Right, so because, it, because you look like you're taller, you're bigger, you know what I'm saying? So like, I never looked at you to be. I'm not saying you you dress whack, but I'm just saying I just never knew that you was into you was into fashion like that. Yeah, I mean, shit. When when you probably knew me, knew me like freshman year. 
How long? How long you stayed at state? I was a state until um oh seven, and then I went to West Georgia in oh eight. Okay, okay. So yeah, so while I was there, if this was two thousand, bro, you can't go this way, you because you don't have no key, you'll get locked out. You gotta go around, G. You gotta let let them know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, on side, bro. it's on the other side. You gotta go around, G. If you if you go if you go through the courtyard, you'll be locked in the courtyard. <laughs> so go outside, go to um 127, bust it up. <laughs> My fault, y'all. I had to get you let them right. know. Go ahead. Let them know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get them right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean I was a broke college student. I ain't had no summer jobs. Shit, I came in. Really, I was just going to class and, and chilling and, and, and fucking around like everybody else was. But once I um once I graduated, like while I was in school, I was working for uh Capital City Bank. Uh-huh. And then once I once I graduated, I was hired by Wachovia Wells Fargo. So okay. I was working with them. And um Hello, Cole. Oh, oh. Somebody said well um that sewing machine necklace fire. Hey, I appreciate <laughs> hey, I'm it. I'm glad they said it first. Don't sit here looking appreciate at it. I'm like, my um my your my, neck I, is iced out. <laughs> a friend of a friend of mine's a jeweler and um he's in he's in Carolina, so He's in Carolina, so he doesn't. He did my jewelry and shit. So this is um. It actually say like bistro on it and everything. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a, oh, it's a that's custom piece. Oh, okay, yeah, I got um, mine tucked in. <laughs> my my homie, my homie, uh, Latif, Latif Designs did this joint. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll put it in there if y'all want to see it. Yeah, uh, my, my man do some good work, man. And also, uh, also put um your um your guy in there too. Um, toy designs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me put him in there. Yeah, so they can they can go reach out. Um, so like I was so like I was saying, um so what I could be Wells Fargo hired me. So this is fresh out of college. I'm doing a whole banker experience. Like this wasn't this is like them, you know, gearing me to be a banker and shit. From being from the south, all that's all I knew was, you know, we need more black businessmen, go to school, get your business degree. I had a mind in business uh business marketing. I graduated ten years ago, actually. This was May uh, May 8th, 2010 is when I graduated. May 10th, 2010, I was in Augusta, Georgia for training with Wells Fargo. Okay. So at the time, me being a banker, um, you young, get black right. man, young black man in the South, I had to have my suit right. right. So I was so I was so young that like I couldn't build a book of business and shit because like people would come in the bank and look and be like, oh, who, who's this little kid over here? Right. Not gonna keep calling me no little kid. I'm a grown ass man. I got my college degree and everything. So, <laughs> at, so even when I graduated, I had a little beard, right? Uh -huh. So I just let I just let that shit go wild. Yeah. Get longer to make me make me look a little older and more distinguished. So, um, and then from there, like I was stripping like vintage suits, and like you said, I was going to my tailor, and my tailor was chopping them shits up. So yeah. like my vintage suits now were like cut on me. And right. now with me being like six two, six three on a good day with a with a suit and a beard. Yeah, it, it, it people take notice. And you you get a little choppy. You get a little choppy. You you look you was <laughs> you you in the matrix. Hey, hold on, hey, hold on, hold on. We got some people saying we can't hear. Oh, hey, they can't hold on, hold on. We gotta get the Wi-Fi right. Hey, hold on, time out. <laughs> I don't think you can hear me, baby. <laughs> His Wi-Fi is just I can't hear him. Where are you? <laughs> 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 Hey, I can hear you. Can 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 I see? Can I can I hear you now? Say something. Nah, bro, I can't hear you. Okay, okay I hear you a little bit. I can. Go to his hey, you might wanna you might wanna go your router. Ah, uh, it's the pizza man. The pizza man fucked me up coming over here. You heard me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard you just blaming on pizza man just now. Yeah. Yeah, it was the pizza man <laughs> fucking up shit, man. <laughs> He know good and well he wasn't supposed to come over here and mess with my, my connection. Uh, but you good now, though. I don't know what you're I'm, doing right now, but you I'm good outside. right here. I'm outside. So, okay. listen. Oh, yeah, this Harlem. New York lit, just for everybody oh, watching the news. We good. Go ahead. Y'all be straight. 
Yeah, New York lit for everybody watching the news. We they out here. It was eighty some degrees today. For real? But um, yeah. So what I was saying was, I started getting people saying like, "Yo, you know, your suits are nice. You should do this. You should do that." Um, as you know, I hoop. I hoop a lot. I was going to LA Fitness in Atlanta. By this time, I was a banker in Atlanta. I was hooping in Atlanta, and uh, a, a lady by the name of Rita Williams. She went to UConn. She played basketball. Okay. She was she was UConn Husky. She actually played in the WNBA. Um, she thinks she got a ring. She's an all star. All kinds of crazy shit. But um, Rita used to always tell me when we hoop, Rita would be like, "Yo, you should you should be a stylist." And me being in Atlanta, I'm like, I'm like, man, everybody no stylist. Not no, I was in Atlanta at the time. I was like, ain't oh. nobody making no, ain't nobody making no money as a stylist in Atlanta. Got you. You you haven't made it to New York yet. I had made it to New York yet. Okay. So by this time, you know, I'm still doing my bank thing, do getting my suits right. Okay. And shit, I started hating that bank shit. And then it was always something in the back of my mind. So uh, by the time I got grown, I got my family. I was in New York. Um, it was like I hate all this shit. Right. I might as well try it. So how, how you transition? How you do the transition from a banker into being a wardrobe stylist and actually making money um, and not just doing free stuff? So at first it was a. Uh, at first I went to, well I went to the education system. So I was like a dean at a charter school in Harlem. Um, I did that for a few years. I was coaching basketball. I was coaching girls basketball. I was a I was a head coach for varsity um, girls basketball. We won a charter. I won a charter city championship and everything in New York. Um, and then me and my, my principal kind of like didn't see the eye to eye. I think she had a problem with like parents coming to see me instead of her and they didn't renew my contract. Okay. So when they did, so they went, then they didn't renew my contract. I was like, fuck all this shit. <laughs> like I was in banking. Like I was in the most, the two most stressful things in the world is people's kids and people's money. Gotcha. And I was just like, after that, I was, just, I was worn out. I was weary. I was like, man, fuck all this. I'm going to just trust God and do what I want to do. All and right. So, that's what it is, man. So I, so I went from making good money one year to no money the next year. And and, and then sticking it out. Yeah. Hell yeah. So I don't I, know why. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> that shit was rough. G that shit was rough to lose tens, tens, several tens of thousands of dollars in, in the course of seven months. It was hard. It was hard. But. So, so do, do you think having the, the styling and like the because being a stylist you have to have a certain eye you know if yeah. well if you're a good stylist you gotta right. have a good eye for color you gotta have a good eye for style you, and obviously you gotta have a good eye for fit right right so right. like do you think any of that help when you start making your own garments uh, of course of course because now like as a stylist you want to um i'm about to walk through the building again now as a stylist um, it's always shit that's that's cool, right? Yeah. But then once you can make stuff, then it then it changes everything. Now then you're like, shit, I can do what I want to do. Right. So, in in the design aspect, it's it's real, it's fun. Cause now now you just do what you want to do. Um. So I think the eye the eye is a is a plus, but I think it's better when you can um. Do what you want to do. Hold on. What you doing? Walking through the apartment? Yeah, through my through my lobby. It's good now. You still oh, good? Yeah, you good? Thing? Yeah, you've been good for right. for for a little bit. Cool. Yeah, man. Um, so, so yeah, that's how that's how I kind of like transitioned to it. And then, like I said, I was I was just trying it out. You know, you do some freestyling shit. You do um, you do some shit where it's little to no money. Um, yeah. And then eventually, you just get sick of that shit, and you you start like noticing your worth. Yeah. And then you start like. I just started telling people no, like, at, like now, and then like now through this whole process, like I, I trust God so much. I tell people no in a heartbeat. Right. I, I I prefer my peace over any of that shit. So like, got gotcha. you. I I'll tell people no, like, nah, I, I'm not doing that. Or oh, for a shout out, bro, I can't. My son can't eat no shout out. I don't know what no shout out tastes like. <laughs> got gotcha. you. And I can't call Con Con Ed <laughs> or nobody. The rich people. No, I never up. tasted a shout out either. That's a fact. The leasing office won't. What I'm gonna do? <laughs> yeah. So, 
it's a shout out, you know, shit. These folks gave me a shout out. You think they don't give a fuck about no shout out? So I can't care about no shout out. And that ain't no disrespect. That's just like, like I'm grown as hell. Like I and, and this ain't no like like Big Sean said. This ain't no hobby. This how I eat. So so now it's like, in in the most respectful way, I I tell people no, or I tell people I cannot. Gotcha. It's like, I need to pay bills, and just like this ain't no hobby, and it ain't no cool. Like right. whether I get. Whether I get three thousand likes, a thousand likes, or whatever, like I want to be paid. Yeah. So hey, so um, hey, tell me about the um, was it Adidas? The one, the um, the event you did with Adidas, you had to make a garment or something, or, 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 or chop it oh, up and, and make something yeah, yeah. different. I had I had like a little part time with them for for a while, so like. Tell me um, about that, man, because I think I think that's super cool, man. Because when I see collaborations. Uh huh. You only see like collaborations with like uh, celebrities and athletes and musicians yeah. and stuff like that. But to see a guy that that got his collaboration because he's a creator, and they yeah. got you during the whole event, you're actually making something with your hands at the machine during the event. I just yeah. found that that's super dope, man. So like, tell me a little bit more about about that situation. So what I did like at the time, I think this was 2018. I had got a part time with Adidas trying to like just pass time and like keep my mind right. Um, and then like, you know, through word of mouth, people were asking like, what do you do this, that and the other? And then I told them and then eventually they put me on, on, on a gig and, I, and the gig was with the Grace Brothers for a weekend where I was just like tailoring in the store and um, doing crazy like alterations and like mashups and allowing people to come to me. And then we create a piece um, together. Okay. Um, and that was really dope. That was like my first experience doing that. And then a few months later, uh, a few months later, Adidas runners reached out to me and they wanted me to um, do the same thing where I was like upcycling old running shirts and materials for, for them for a night. So I was doing that. And I once again, I allowed them to be creative. They came in, we mash up some clothes and make it happen. And then most recently, I had like two workshops at Puma uh, where I, I saw where those I, too. Uh, that was cool. It was like only our workshops. It was cool. I would like to do it again and like sit down with them and like do it the right way. Cause I think like they got a lot of space in there. I think they just, they just weren't like familiar with how, how it could have, how it could have went, but it was All cool. Right. Um, it was a blessing. I met two guys there and I'm, I'm actually like, they brought me in, um, for their brand, which is called, uh, um, with love. Okay. So now, so now we're like we're creating pieces in like t-shirt kind of dope clothing line um, called with love, and I'll be able to do some like custom pieces and like uh, uh, share my pieces with with people, you know. And and funny enough, you know, with love, okay. this is in custom designs with people all, right. people all over the world. So w what you like better, man? You like um, upcycling, like you like chopping some up and making something, or do you like just starting from scratch with just regular fabric? Like what's like what's your like is there is there some one that's bigger than the other one that gives you like a a little bit more of a creative rush? Um, probably upcycling because it's like you know, when people say like, uh, oh, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Like yeah. so I, so I, I like I like the upcycle because like I can show people what I saw that they didn't see. Gotcha. Now when you just when you just create from scratch, like this it's cool and it's okay. fun and it's exciting. But it's like, you know the direction the whole time. So when I upcycle, like I don't, I don't necessarily fully know the direction. Yeah. So like, I can, I can go in there and be like, nah, this shit's gonna be dope, and they'll be like, what? And I'm like, nah, just wait. And then like, I make that shit happen, and it blow minds, and like it'll blow my mind, and yeah. we all in there like, like excited. So I think well, I think upcycling is really fun. And then you know, once again, like it, it can be environment, you know, environment friendly, you know, and everybody can like. I guess like appreciate the whole upcycling process. Yeah, I mean I don't mind upcycling, but I ain't gonna lie, man. I hate taking stuff apart. I hate yeah. cut stuff you know, up. So and listen, I got I, I got to charge people for that. And people don't understand. Like, <laughs> yeah. with the, like like no, I gotta I gotta take this apart. You know, I gotta take this apart. And people don't understand because once again, you got people on Instagram capping where they like got the <laughs> scissors and they're like cutting fabric. Like you don't cut a jacket, you gotta rip the seam and right. like, deconstruct that shit. So people don't really understand that. So um. That that part is terrible. I ain't gonna lie. Got you, I got you, got you. All right, man. I mean, that's what's up, man. But unlike me, I, I like I like just taking fabric. It yeah, works yeah, yeah. Just upcycling. But 
or what I love looking at upcycling because I'd be like, man, yeah, it's super yeah. dope. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it looks like this, and then you made this out of it. But I was like, man, I, I already know how that went. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's terrible breaking it down, but like, like once again, that's part of the process, and and it helps you learn. So when I do have classes like that, I either did with Adidas or that I most recently did with Puma. If somebody stands by and they watch me like break it down, it kind of like helps them understand like what aligning looks like or what um what this how the sleeve is really shaped gotcha. um, so that part of it i enjoy especially like if i'm showing somebody while i'm working yeah um, but it's a it's a bitch to take that shit down take it apart i don't lie gotcha so and in, in our line of business we're like we're teaching you know what i'm saying we're not i'm not making nothing for nobody <laughs> the wife she's not making nothing for nobody but your your business set up like a little different like you take yeah. orders you know what i'm saying and you actually make pieces for people so like do you find that like like how like how how is that working with like giving a service to someone and someone giving you feedback on your creation and you know what i'm saying you trying to like be professional tell them you know what i'm saying like why you did it a certain way and what they trying to because no people like People that don't know what you're doing. Yeah, they just don't know. They think so look, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna answer glitter. that. Let me. I want can I answer this question here. real quick? Can I answer this? somebody says any words on Greg Lauren and his upcycling line and pricing? Um, CJ, G. Um, so Greg Lauren stuff is really dope. Um, his pricing is a little high for the simple fact that it is being deconstructed and put together, which is a pain in the ass. And Greg Lauren isn't personally doing that shit, so he's got to. He's got to get his money by paying somebody else to do that shit. So that's probably why his pricing is like that. And also he can cap because he's the nephew of, of Ralph. Um, so once you have like that kind of name, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. That's why his pricing is like that. Um, and also that he's, he's paying somebody else. So like prime example is that I'll do a designer. Like now I'm cutting up bags and doing designer masks. Like I can charge somebody. $150 for a designer mask um, because I'm doing the work right. when that, that other designer or somebody that you see influencer and you see them online and they're doing that shit, they're going to charge you 250 because they got to pay somebody. They got to pay somebody like me to cut that shit down and then they got to get their money. So they breaking bread with somebody. So it's easier to come to me. Like I just sold a two tone Louis mask um, for 150 when everybody else is selling them shits for 225 and above. Um, but that's because I'm doing the work myself. So like, I kind of cut the middleman out and I don't need to like, upcharge you so I can get mine. Um, so I just want to answer that. I like Greg shit. Once again, it's not, you know what I'm saying? Somebody else doing it. It's just his ideas and that cutting up and putting it, that shit is really hard to like try to match two totally different garments and make them like even. Gotcha. Um, I'm sorry. I just, I was really interested in that question. My bad, North. Oh no, you no, you good, man. If you see something, let the clip go. <laughs> Listen, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, my fault. I was just really interested in that joint because, like, people always say that about pricing, and pricing, and people don't understand, and pricing is what it is. Yeah, I, I mean, tell people all the time. I mean, that's true, man. Like the wifey. I mean, you'll hear me say this a lot. Uh, her business, her business shit podcast. She teaches a lot about that because a lot of. Um, people that have small businesses are do do tune in, and the right. one thing that creators don't pay for is their time. You know, what I'm saying you right. know, budget it in the the fabric. You know, budget it in. You know, what I'm saying all the notions. You got your machine. You got your lights turned on. You ain't thinking about none of this stuff, and right. then you send down. You put your time into it, right? And um, and depending on with depending on what what kind of orders um you trying to fill or whoever 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 these creators trying to fill they got to take in consideration of hey if you was at a job you would be, you would be getting paid by, by the hour so right. you need to get yourself paid too right you so, gotta pay um, me for the work you gotta pay me for the work absolutely the man absolutely so um that's 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 that that was a good point man that, that was a really good point um yeah so do, yeah do, 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 do you come into problems like that about price points? I mean, like, well, yeah, because like, because when people when people see something, yeah, and they be like, oh, that's dope. Can you make me one? And then they see what you're gonna charge. Yeah, I come into it all the time. They don't like it that much after that. They don't because <laughs> well, because now like it's 2020. We live in a world where it's a lot of fast fast fashion. So like, you can go to H and M, you can go to Zara, and people don't understand like the owner of Zara is like top five richest man in the world. He's just knocking off shit and like he can afford it. 
because it's, it's factory produced. Right. Um, so it's a different kind of manpower to one is just like one person. But I get it all the time. I get it from athletes. I haven't had athletes hit me and be like, nah, bro, come on, bro. <laughs> bro, I'm not trying to hear that, bro. I, yeah. Listen, I can Google your contract. I know what you make monthly. Yeah. This is the price, and my price is a fair. And, like, sometimes I'm on the road, and then I have my mentor make something so we all can eat, so we all can break bread. Right. But, like, because we're doing it, like, we can give you the most fair price, but we're not going to sell ourselves short for a shout-out. That's a or fact. Because, or, or because you don't understand, like, what's going into this. Like, you don't understand that once I buy this fabric and once I, you know, and all of that stuff, you're not – you don't even take into consideration that, yo, I had to put interfacing in this to, like – to give give it some structure or because it was too thin or you're not taking into consideration like oh the thread that i had to buy yeah or you're not taking into consideration that oh the buttonholes i had to put in here like right you don't take they don't understand that which is which is fine um i've gotten to the point to where like i don't go back and forth with people like i tell you what it is and then if you don't like it a lot of times i tell you to go listen you can go find it cheaper which i know you cannot find it cheaper and then you're gonna call me right back and i'll pick right. up the phone and i'm gonna act, i'm gonna act like it never happened like yo what's <laughs> up all right Go ahead gotcha. and send it. <laughs> so, like, I got to the point to where, like, I'm not going back and forth with people because they don't understand. Because, hell, five years ago, I wouldn't have understood either. Right. So, I don't fault you for that, but I can't allow you to disrespect me or or undermine me and my work. I can just, gotcha. like, tell you what it is and then go from there. But I get that all the time. Like, oh, nah, that's... What? Like, bro, this isn't what you... You don't understand. Yeah, like, if I got to make you a pair of pants... The, the the fabric alone gonna cost me one fifty. Yeah. So what um, are you like? What you expecting? We got a timer on this on this live, baby. An hour. It's gonna shut you off in an hour. Oh okay. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't. Listen, we can jump back on it. I don't listen. Yeah, for an hour, if it kicks you off, just jump back. On. Oh okay. Oh okay. I, it's my first time being on here that long. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, that ha that happens to me, but I know you guys are, are are like you guys are doing classes, which are which are good. Somebody told me like. Oh, you should do classes, or I would love for you to teach. I don't know, like. And then I learned in such a a, a non traditional way that I don't know if I would be able to treat, teach. I probably could if I like sat down and figured out. Of course you could. Of course you could. I don't. I don't know. But I, the price point thing, I get. I get that a lot. Uh, what else do I get a lot? Let's see. When you know your product is good, you don't have to go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. I don't go back and forth with people at all. Like. Yeah. Even good. even even now with these mask thing, like this is this pandemic thing, like I, I like once again, me coming from a financial world like of banking, like I don't give a fuck about no money. Gotcha. Like, it just don't because I I've seen people like with millions and millions of dollars and be flat miserable, like suicidal type stuff. So now like money doesn't move me. So like I just like to create and I like I like peace. So mm -hmm. even to the point to where when I make masks. Like, I'm selling all my masks either through email or through my DMs. I don't have it. I'm not putting it up on a website because I don't want it to work me. I want to work it. Right. That makes sense. Gotcha. So, you want to control so, how much work you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to control it. So now I'm like, I'm cooling. I tell you what my price is. People are, oh, that's too much. Listen, I send people to praying hands and, and God bless you. I don't go back and forth with people. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I, I went live trying to look for you. So I, I hung up and came looking for you. Oh, my bad, bro. It's all good. So we back, man. Let me let me wait till the numbers get back up. See everybody. Get everybody get back on. Um, damn, I was zoom by. I'm outside in, in our little courtyard area. Oh, okay. Um, it was something you said. I was just I was just talking about like like pricing and whatnot because how people don't understand. Oh, that was my how, question. How I don't so go back so, and forth. So so we know how difficult it is to be working with customers, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? P custom stuff for people. You know what I'm saying? Paying their hard-earned money for you to make them something. And you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to lace it up nice. Right. So because we know it's, it's not an easy thing to do, and, it, and sometimes it could cut into some of your own creativity. Like, what about it that you love so much for you to continue to do it? Because I know, like, you, you love making these pieces. You love taking orders. You love satisfying customers. So, like, what about it that just really got you still in it and just working it? Um, I guess because I still have like some control, like I still have some like creative control. Um, I guess that's what keeps me in it. Hold on, okay. hold on, hold on one second. I'm listening. Um, I had a graphic up on the inside. That's what keeps me in it. Keeps me going. 
Uh-huh. And I'm, a, I'm able to, like, once again, like, kind of be selective a little bit. Um, uh-huh. But I tell people, I tell people no. Like, I'm not afraid. Like, I'm accountable. I'm not afraid to tell people, to tell people, I had to get my stuff, tell people no. So, like, if it's something I can't do I ref- I, or I don't want to do, like, I can refer you. Okay. Um. But yeah, I, I think just because like I really I really love to be creative. Like I'm I feel I always tell people like I'm a I'm a true creative, I'm a true artist to the point to where like it just makes me happy. Like it, it Man, just brings me to hey, what have you ever just see. started have you ever I had an idea what you wanted and you didn't even have a pattern. You just started like measuring and like started drawing on your fabric and cutting it up. And not and then, like and as you're going, you like making up pieces, and then at the end, you're like, "Man, how in the hell yeah. did I do that?" I do that a lot with upcycling. I yeah. know when I when I start from scratch, a lot of times, like I I'll, I'll get going, and then like I, I ain't gonna lie, I stop and just I lose motivation sometimes, um, or I'll get like so close to being done that it looks cool, and I'll be satisfied that I won't finish it. I don't know why, gotcha. but I think I think the challenge of like upcycling, like I kind of always finish it. Because like it's that challenging. Um, Got you. So like I've gotten close to like I've I've done pieces to where like I've gotten super duper close, and like it'd be a coat, and I just need to put buttons on it, and I. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> just because like I'll be satisfied, oh that shit hard, and I'll be done. Yeah, and that's then, it. But it's been it's been times to where like I want to conquer uh, like an upcycling piece. Got um, you. But oh, also. Remember we were talking the other day about uh about a certain type of client that'll come in and like because you're a creative or because you do something, they want you to do something for them and their brand. Gotcha. Right? Yeah, Remember yeah. We had yeah, that, yeah. that little quick conversation. Yeah, so, like 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 you make a sample piece for them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So like <laughs> you, you right, you laugh. You, you yeah. laughing. You laughing because you like cause in your head you like Brit. Bro, you got me fucked up, bro. Yeah, yeah, you tripping. <laughs> you tripping, like, uh, I just don't do wholesale stuff because it don't benefit me. Like, it'll benefit a factory to get a wholesale job where they can run it up. Right. But for, for me, as one person, like, to make 50 pieces of the same shit, like, that don't benefit me. That benefits you. Like, I'm losing. So you want right. me to cut you a deal and do, the, I'm doing the exact same work. 50 times, and you want me to discount it because I'm doing it 50 times. Like, and the li- and all, the, all the lines got to be straight. <laughs> but see, you know? but people, don't, people don't understand that when it's, a, when it's a factory, like, this person is doing pockets. This person is doing this stitch. This person is doing a top stitch. Like, so it's different. And they can pump out 50 pieces for you in no time as opposed right. to me doing the same work. Like, this is a lot of work to do 50 times. So, like, when people say it, like, they just don't understand, like, oh, yeah, you can, you can do this. Can you make me? And I'd be telling people, like, bro, I can, I can make a sample, but I can't, I, can't, I can't be your production. But holla at me. I can help you with production. Gotcha. Boom, you pay me for, for that, and I can facilitate production for you. But what I can't do is fucking do this shit 100 times. I'm not going to gotcha. do that. That doesn't, that doesn't benefit me at all. And people think, like, I'm being a dickhead about it, but it's like, um, I'm not because like you don't understand this this factory. There's 15 people in here doing this one job, as opposed to me doing this one job that these 15 people are doing. So they don't understand that. So it's like it's no hard feeling. It's just that I'm not gonna sit up here and do the work of 15 people and get yeah. paid like one, like like that. Like I am work. I am dot J40. <laughs> they just asked us how much will we charge for a sample. We just saying yeah. we ain't we ain't doing no samples. Like I I, yeah. I don't. Yeah, Listen, that's, that's, so you want to? That's like that's you, more whole, wholesale stuff. Right, all right. You can you can do one piece or like a sample or like I can you can, you can get a piece created for you, but it's not going to be beneficial if you have to go into production <laughs> for the simple fact that the production people are going to want to do your sample so you know what it looks like. So right. even if I was to create a sample for you and you wanted to go into production. And you do go into production, you still got to get a whole nother sample made because yeah. Now I could take your money, but like, why would I take yeah. your money and waste your time and waste my time? And someone right. said there are sample makers out there. Yeah, that's that's true. It's people that a, will will do that. So it's just something that neither one of us do. 
I'll do it if you pay me, but but <laughs> but I'm only gonna do a sample. Like if I do one, like so if you do a sample, that's just like, yo, can you make me a jacket? All right, all right cool. Got you. I'll make you a jacket, but now that's just that's just one jacket. Now if you want to take that in production, then you gotta get that graded. You gotta get you know yeah. what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta go get the grading, you gotta go get the pattern, you gotta go get yeah. I mean, I said it backwards, the pattern and the grading. Right, 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 right. You still once you get to the factory, they still gonna say, Hey, look, we gotta do your sample. Got you. Cause they're gonna charge you for it. So that's good information, man. That's good information. So uh, that's I, just I, like I, that's I, the process of it. I wanna bring it a little bit more into um more into the DIY world. So like oh, well, what things could this industry improve on for us you know what i'm saying so like like what what, what would make it easier for you you know what i'm saying like wouldn't it be easier to go and like see patterns that you could purchase and then you know and then like make things with them and then alter stuff from like that or is yeah, it I like think, like what I what think, like i think that and like and like more representation like I see you doing your thing. I, like if I like once again, if I go into this, um, I'm I'm in a garment district. Who has pattern? Daytona. If I go to Daytona and I see you guys in Daytona with the pattern, like just more representation, like of, of that would make me want to be interested because like it's people all day every day through the garment district who you're not flipping through patterns because like you're gonna see a, a dated pattern and it's not gonna excite you, um, for the most yeah. part. Um, so I think like just representation, whether that be uh of your gender your nationality, like whatever, you just want to see um, that pattern to get you excited. Because when you flip through them pattern books, you're not excited. Like, all oh, that, that shit is trash. You're not, you're not excited. You're like, what the fuck? I'm not excited about nothing. I'm not, none of, and then like, and then once again, like you said earlier, like, I'm a bigger guy. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm damn near 6'3". I'm 215, 220 pounds. Like, yeah. there's nothing in those books that, that's fly. So, right. you're going to, like, my big ass ain't got no business looking through no patterns. Like, don't, <laughs> don't none of that shit, you know, concern me. Gotcha. None of it's like, like, you know, directed towards me. So like, I'm not, and that's probably why I don't go look through patterns. Okay. Unless, um, unless I'm like making a dress or like, cause Bruh, it, I don't, I don't look through patterns either. And like a dummy, I look through them every time we go in, knowing ain't going to be in there. But Just listen, you got, you got some listen. fire stuff for how you altering these patterns. And like, I've seen the new patterns and stuff. I just haven't gotten a chance to like, I, I want that that trucker jacket. I want that trucker jacket pattern. Yeah, Yo, you need to go and send it to me. Oh, I want to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's hard. You like that's, that? <laughs> that's I like good, it. right? I, I need it. I listen. I, I'm a, I can't send it to you. Look, <laughs> I, I, I'll pay for the pattern. <laughs> <laughs> no, we best with you. We best with you. <laughs> listen, I'm just a big dude. You just gotta make sure that grading right, man. I got this. Oh no, no we good. No, no, you good. You good. Listen, no, we good. Listen, we, we do plus size and all that stuff too. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely plus size. I got this dad bod. I'm two fit. Listen, last time I got on the yeah. scale, two, two nineteen. <laughs> two nineteen. I know you ain't. You ain't never seen no two hundred. Nah. So I need nah. It to fit nah. Me. Be a little close, but nah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, I needed to fit me, but I think I think that's what's killing people the most is that like um you don't see that representation. Yeah. And, and um and that's that's on anything, whether it's social media, whether it's when you go into these these um stores where you're purchasing patterns, you don't see rep representation. So it just don't excite you. Um yeah. even even with myself, like once again, I don't try I don't sometimes it's just, it's just hard because I'll um I'll go from styling and then I'll go back to uh, designing. So like I'll be styling in the where I'm in these stores all day, every day, and I'm I'm pulling and I'm purchasing. Or I'm you're looking at you're looking at design. You're looking at color waves. You know, right? What I'm, I'm doing I'm doing yeah. consignment pulls. And so when you do consignment pulls for athletes, like they want high end stuff because that's what they gotta have. So you're seeing all of this stuff, and then I'm jumping right back into to like what I'm doing. So it's kind of it's a struggle for it's a struggle for me because. I'm I'm jumping both because like I don't want to watch it, but then like shit, I need this little check to go assist over here or gotcha. this style over here. So like I'm watching a little bit of both, but not watching people. But at the same time, there's no designer designer that you see on a machine. Gotcha. And I got like I got homies, I got like friends, and they tell me like, oh look what this person does, and I tell them like, yo, they they not doing this. Like, yeah. You see you see the scissors on the table, you see yeah. the tap measure on the table. Yeah. 
Like it's, it's a different level of respect. Just, it's a different level said, of respect. Show me the video where they threading the machine and they stepping on that pedal, and they yeah. can't do that. Which and it's nothing wrong with that. Like that part of that design aspect. If that's for you, that's for you. Yeah. Um, and because there, there are some there are some people that can sew that couldn't think of a cool design that that a designer would. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, you, you got you got you got both. You know. But there's not enough people who are on the machine that's creating dope stuff that I can exactly. see, that I can identify with and like. And you oh, know that's what? Hard. That's why I'm on this live and that's right, why right, right, I invited right. you to this live. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I ain't even Somebody that, said, I ain't what's, even, I ain't even that dope, man. Dan? Uh, any thought? It's my man, hey, CJ, <laughs> he got, <laughs> listen, I'm in Harlem, Dapper Dan, his spot right over, yeah. right over there. Um, I met, if, if you go on my page, you can see pictures of, of, of me and Dap. Um, I saw it. I, I, I met Dap a couple times, man. He a real solid guy. Um, and he's he's a legend in the game, but uh, some people don't know like he he's not sewing either. Um, it's crazy. First time I met Dap, I was with I my think, mentor. I think he can sew though. He I think can, he, but he's just at that level now. It's like right, but yeah. but he, even back in the eighties, he wasn't sewing because he had got so big to the point where he wasn't on the machine. Right. I mean that that's just like Ralph that's Lauren. Just, that just growth. Ralph Lauren used to sew ties back in the day. People don't know. Yeah, he but started he, out he with bow ties. But he wasn't sewing anything else. Um, right. But real fun, real fun story about that is that when I first met Dapper Dan, it was it was in the winter time. It was me and my mentor. We going through the garment district and then we see Dap. So we we walking. And I'm looking. I'm like, yo, that's Dap. So we look. He turned. Dapper Dan see my mentor, and he he walk over there to us. He's like, hey, what's going on, fellas? And he see me, gave me some gave me some Dap, showed me some love, and he said, yeah. and, and my mentor is like, yeah, I'm I'm Torrey, and Dap was like, your Torrey design? Like, no, I seen your work, like. Like you next, you a legend. Yeah. This is what this is what Dapper Dan is telling my mentor. Like that's what's up, man. I I done been in some rooms that like that's crazy, but but Dap when Dap saw him, Dap was like, nah, you a like nah, you yeah. a legend. You and a and legend. some people deserve that. And some people deserve that. So fact. So the whole the whole aspect about like Dapper Dan, like I mean he a, he's he's legendary. Like what he what he did with fashion, which is kind of which is in a sense, um in a sense of upcycling kind of thing because he was taking other people's patterns. I mean, not patterns, but um, textiles or making his own textiles and creating his own, like, pattern or style. So, Got you. Um, and, and that aspect I still come in. Hold on. Iconic. I am Lisa Washington. I don't know who you guys are, but uh, I, just, I just needed it. Uh, this conversation is dope. All right. Oh, that's what's up. Appreciate oh, somebody that. Somebody says, how do I focus on my niche for my brand? Um, or should, should I just make limited pieces for every of every garment? Sean Coleman, Sean Coleman, I had that same problem because I don't. I'm in between like trying to do, trying to find my own lane, and trying to pay bills at the same time. So it's hard because like you'll try to find your own lane, and then um, I'm I'm weird. So like even back in college, like me and Norris knew of each other. He was on the fourth floor, I was on the fifth floor. Like. And I'm a Gemini, so I'm kind of always like standoffish. So I don't even feel like people always fuck with me at all. <laughs> I think people think like, yo, this motherfucker do some dope shit here and there. But yeah. people don't really, people ain't really shopping with me like that. I yeah. mean, I'll have some, I'll have like a few high end clients that are like hitting out and it'll pay the bills, but I can't even put them on my page. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't even post them. Like it's NDAs or it's whatever. So like that shit ain't providing no lane for me. But um, what I would say, Sean Coleman, is just to like, just to create and let and let let God kind of like direct it because like shit yeah. right now you would and think also, make it, making, add, making masks would be my would be my niche and, and shit it's paying some bills so I ain't mad at it but like <laughs> just keep creating um because I don't know my like my, my, my homie all the time is like yo you gotta find that thing for you and like I don't watch other people and people tell me all the time people stop fucking comparing me to damn scammers too dog I don't want nobody in my motherfucking DMs talking about oh you should see this person <laughs> These people are fucking scamming. Like, <laughs> hold on, what what problem are you right. doing? Oh, what happened? Oh, 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 hey, before we change the, the conversation, um, Sean, Sean Coleman, uh, what, what I would what I would tell you to do is check out my wife podcast, which is called Business Shit. <laughs> and after we get out the after we get out this live, we can chop it up too. You definitely need to be talking to the wifey. Um uh bistro so like i love your brand i love all the stuff you got going on and and uh she 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 is a, um she's not only is a creator creative but she's also a, a business owner too so um that's definitely something that y'all y'all can do 
Boom for the love. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to. I, it, it, that's that's a hard thing trying to find trying to find your lane, man. Like it's I'm tough, man. To, it's tough. I'm trying it's to tough. find and my it lane. Also, it's tough when you don't find too many people doing exactly what you're doing. Say what selling outlets are you using? Um, shit. I just right now I just told you I work off emails and DMs because like I want to. I'm crazy enough to where like I just trust God and I don't. I want to. I want to select my own work. I don't want to like put shit up at one at one point in time when i was doing the whole project runway shit like I, I had a line i had a clothing line people were shopping here and there grabbing little pieces which was cool but i was spending more money than i was making and i was like this ain't it this ain't it i can't keep doing this and now it's funny because like now it's people asking me like the name of my brand was children of the south people are like yo where the children of the south shit da, da, da. i was gonna, like, add, I was gonna ask you about that I'm too like, i'm like man <laughs> in my head i'm like man shit. Fuck y'all, man. Y'all wasn't shopping with me then, man. I don't, listen. I was shopping because I was making it. So look, 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 look. You done. Where was y'all at five thousand dollars ago, man? Shit. Yeah. Hey, why you ain't doing? I'm like, man. So now this at this point, like, I just don't. I haven't. I haven't made any children of the South thing. Like I said, I just. I just linked up the last Puma gig. I just linked up with these two guys, and now um, they got a brand called With Love, and like they bringing me on. I'm about to like create some like. I'm just gonna be able to create like whether I'm. Adding to shit like this, so like he's got the the uh the from New York with love like fitted hat that we just like doing shit. We doing teas. I got a fucking quarantine sample right here. Let me see. You got some fresh out there. I got a quarantine sample right here. You see quarantine survivor. Clearly I see it. Godliness. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got I got t-shirt samples right here. You see the with love. Yeah. Right. And on the back, you got the forever quarantine survivor. Right, you got the goodness and next to godliness. So hey, like, hey, Stephen Miller asking which, what what a hat said. Which which hat? Hey, that's your that's your frat bro, right? I know. Hey, quick story. This is funny as shit, right? <laughs> 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 so listen, the Puma gig I did. I know I'm I'm saying all kinds of shit. I ain't got no business. Hey, there, hey, you you know you know Steve know how to sew a little bit too, right? I ain't know that. But I, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, Family, I, I got you. I got you on the um. So listen, so the Puma gig I just did, right? You know, when you do when you do gigs, you sign kind con- like contracts, or whatever. Um, people don't know there's there's different payment. Like when I work with Adidas, Adidas pay you before you go to the through the door. Your money there, <laughs> no problem. Adidas, right. Adidas paying you. That was a good event, huh? <laughs> you work with you work with Nike. It's a net ninety. Net ninety Ooh. means you wait you waking. You wait 90 days for your money to come through. Yeah. That's three months. So people don't know that, like, once again, to be in this industry, you got to be kind of crazy because, like, you got to trust God so much that, like, shit, for three months, this money ain't coming through. Yeah. That's 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 uh, Nike, least- net 90. So um, Puma fucking had me on a net 30. Cool. My net 30 didn't come on time. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck. I'm pissed. I'm 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 calling everybody. I'm going ham. Yeah. <laughs> I I hit Steve up. I text Steve. I said, "Yo, Steve, I'm about to copy you on this email, bro. I need my money." <laughs> <laughs> so so you look at Steve shit. Steve Miller at law. Steve's an attorney. So Steve's Steve, an attorney. Frat brother. Somebody right. asked. Somebody asked what frat. I K S I. Yo, tell the noobs out there. Yeah, I'm not a um, I'm not a uh. Uh, I'm not in it, a frat or anything like that. I was too busy. <laughs> Dre the Dreamer said, "Don't mess up your check, bro." Man, listen, man. I tr- <laughs> listen, I trust God so much, and I'm so creative. I'm so dope. I ain't scared of nothing. G. I've been shot at when I was in Savannah. I'm not scared of nothing, brother. But I hear you though. I'm just fucking around. <laughs> oh yeah, we having fun though. Listen, somebody said everybody needed Steve. It's fucking right. Uh, I was getting stressed. And listen. God is good. Listen, I'm gonna tell you on, on, once again on, on some more G shit, right? And w- once this going back to trusting God, right? Um, and how God don't make no mistakes. I was looking for my money, looking for it. I got paid. I got paid like two days, or the day of the pandemic shit. So as soon as they shut down everything, my money paid. hit. So I'm like, look at God. He was supposed to like. You know what I mean? So sometimes you gotta stop stop tripping because God going don't take care of it. Had yeah. I had had I had got paid when I was supposed to get paid, I would have fucked it up. Yeah. Shopping and all that shit. But I got yeah, yeah. I got paid right on time and it was it was like 
once again, that's me trusting God. It was just, it was perfectly like right on time. Yeah. Right on time. <laughs> Look, potty mouth, trusting God. Listen. <laughs> no, who is that? <laughs> hey, listen. Jay Tanner. <laughs> Jay Tanner. Listen, God know my listen, God know my heart. It's a lot of people out here doing a lot of crazy stuff. Um, oh my uh, goodness. Uh, so <laughs> long as I don't listen, long as I don't be cussing when I'm in line at the gate, I feel like I'm gonna be all right. All uh, right once again, man. We, we we talked about my potty mouth. I once I uh <laughs> I used to be I used to be in a corporate world and then from from, from court like banking and to the school and education, like I wasn't Using such language, and then like I started working for myself, and now I just say what the fuck. JJ Strolls, what up? Because that's what that's just what I do. But God is good. God <laughs> know I cuss. Let him know. <laughs> God know I cuss. It's all good. He loved me the same. It's the people doing way worse than cussing. It's folks in the church that ain't cussing doing way worse than me. Oh, uh, that's a fact, man. That's a so. fact. But we we gonna keep it all about fashion right now. <laughs> <laughs> And DIY. <laughs> hey, but Steve, you a real one for that, Steve. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> yeah. But but it, it, it's it's good to um to chop it up, man, because the conversation we was having is like o the only people that's in this world feel you. You know what I'm saying? When you when you talk about asking somebody to make a sample or 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 doing services like that for someone. They, right. they want a certain type of way. And it, it, it does, in some way, cut down some of your creativity. You know what I'm saying? So it does, it does. I, it, it's just cool, you know what I'm saying, for somebody to know the other side. Yeah, 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 production. Um, but, yeah, you – and this, and this, what I've learned, because, like, all of this is learning, and then, like, my, um, my style mentor, who's been good to me, he always says, uh, you're going to pay tuition. And anything you're going to do, you're going to pay tuition. Like, I didn't go to school for, like, fashion or design. But he says this all the time that uh, you're going to uh, you're going to pay tuition. So like that's whether you're messing up something or you lose something in like fabric or or you're just learning something the hard way. That's just part of you paying tuition. Um, so I try to take all of that into consideration. I also take it in consideration when somebody's confused or they're not familiar with uh, the process. Yeah. So like I can't get mad at your ignorance because like that's like me going to my mechanic. Or something. Well, I know a little bit about cars. That's like me going to my my uh, mechanic and being upset about a price when I'm not knowing like yeah what all it takes or it's worth. So like I don't I don't get upset or like try to get too frustrated with people. I just I manage my energy because that's what I can control. Yeah. And I um I don't match energy because sometimes you know matching energy I might come down to somebody else's level or they just don't understand. So like I just try to in the best way explain to them the process. Or not, or not even the full process, but just like, hey, this is the price, and this is why it's yeah. this. You know, if you don't feel like it's fair, then I, like that's unfortunate. If you do, let's move forward. But yeah. um, you get so, that a lot. You get that a lot. But so, I try. So, at this point, I don't get frustrated. So let me ask you this, man: what's what's next for your brand, bro? Like, what 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 Beachville got in store? You know, we got the whole quarantine now, which you've been working on. Um, um, anything you're excited about, or like? Um, I don't. Man, funny enough, again, that's a loaded I, I, question, bro. <laughs> okay. I, I live, I live kind of day to day. Got you. Uh, which machine cover? Which, which, what do you think, how you feel oh, about machines? Cover stick. Um, look, I'm gonna answer this question first. So, what's next for me is like I, uh, pre-pandemic, I was, um, of course, I have my deck to go uh, to do like on sites in stores or whatnot. I just came off the Puma thing. I was working, trying to circle back with Adidas. Um, I was working with uh, in the talks with like with uh, with New Era and Nike. So and more shit. more brand collaborations. Right, right, right. Because gotcha. that was a different kind of feel, especially for what I was doing, especially with everybody trying to do like um, upcycling type stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's where I was going. So like my deck is geared to that all the way because I enjoy having conversation with people while I'm on the machine, um, showing people, teaching people. Um, and actually, like upcycling too, which is a good, which is a good, fun and like environment uh, friendly kind of event. So that's what that's where I was going. Gotcha. And then this hit and then the pandemic. This hit, and then like now I don't know what life is going to look like. Gotcha. Or or how it's going to circle back around, you know, when they do open up stuff. Like 
will they be able to have events or anything like that? Right. Um, but I, I see, I see you the type of person though. You you able to um to adjust with the times. So like now oh. during the pandemic, I see you've been doing your math stuff. You know, you using your creativity. You right. know what I'm saying, and making luxury stuff for the for the for the buyer that want that kind of you know what I'm saying situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny enough, the story, the backstory behind that, like I wasn't gonna make math. I wasn't at all. Like, I was opposed to it. I'm like, well, I'm not making no math. I'm not doing that. Like, I just, I didn't want to, like, capitalize off of something like this. So what did um, it? Man, one day that, one day I ran it up, man. My account, like, <laughs> I, I had made, like, a, a quick thousand in a day. And I was like, ooh. I was like, hold up. Right. Let me take a few more orders. And then, like, from there, I started posting, and then it just started running. People just started hitting me, like, yo, I need a mask. I need a mask. Right. And then somebody, somebody ordered 10. Now, once again, like, it was a lot. One person ordered 10. Normally, I would say no, but I knew they weren't doing it for, uh, um, for like, a resale purpose. This young lady was ordering 10 because she wanted to send to her family all over the nation, and she was getting ready to get deployed and go to Germany. Gotcha. So I was like... Once again, I operate off of love. That's just kind of who I am. So once she told me, like, yeah, I'm getting ready to get deployed, but I want to take care of my family before I dip, i like, cool. And you, I'll make you, I'll make you 10. Send me the address. I'll send it to yeah. you. So, so I like the, that, ma the I, masks I, that you're making, are these like, because I've seen you make a few different ones. So yeah. I see like you had like your luxury situation. And right. then like, and then um, honestly, I only see you making some, some fire uh, luxury ones. Like is, that, yeah, is that, like, is that the one, is that your niche? Is that what you're doing? Or are you doing like a, a variety nah, of different ones. No, not necessarily, because like although although people do like the luxury type stuff, um, me being a creative, and I'm sure you're the same way. Like I really, I really prefer to stay away from it and let me create my own. Got it. You know what? Whether I'm mixing a neoprene with a with a plaid wool or um, a nylon, like I rather like be my own creative and make my own mask, um, <clears throat> opposed to like using a designer or whatever. But at the same time, I still do it to show people that I can do it. Um, and also, I'm I'm talking, yeah, <laughs> listen, hey, Jay Tanner, you've been coming for me, Jay Tanner. I'm, I'm very highly educated. <laughs> 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 um, but <laughs> you've been coming for me. But, um, Go ahead, bro. Man, made me lose my, my train of thought. But, uh, I like to create my own, so like I, I prefer not to use those designer fabrics, but it's cool yeah. and it's fun. Especially like the first one I did was like a Gucci um, belt bag that I actually deconstructed, and like that was the upcycling type thing, um, because gotcha. it was a it was a damaged belt bag that I made into um, a mask with like a strap or whatever. Um, oh, okay. And then like I started making these Adidas like masks where I was cutting up Adidas fans. I'm still doing that. It's a you lot got of, the little Adidas um, logo right here. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. so like from my my um my relationship with, with a lot of people from Adidas, I'm getting people to send me stuff. So now it's coming in the mail. Damn, I'm going to the mailbox. Yeah, I'm going to the mailbox and I'm cutting pants up to make masks because like people want a dope mask. Um, but... It's JJ that. Shrugs. What up, boy? The Div has Somebody. been one of the realest conversations about the DIY small world with real authentic brothers. Y'all are so relatable <laughs> to me. All right. Appreciate that, brother. And that and I think that's what we're working on too. We're trying to be like more. I've been rocking with him for a while, man. We don't, we don't, we don't see, we don't see that like that representation. And then when I say representation, I'm not talking about like brown or. I'm just talking about like we just don't see men like um, on right. a machine. Exactly. On a machine. I'm just, I'm just blessed enough to that that my mentor, person who I was introduced to, it was a male that had been on the machine his whole life. So right. it was like, it's like me wanting to be like in a bakery or something. I walk in there and it's like the chef is a, is a male that's putting stuff in the oven. It was the right. same for me. So yeah. um, <clears throat> that's been the best like representation. That's the only person like I've, I've watched other than, other than you Norris. Cause like, I don't, I don't, I'm sure you know more people than me um, that, that are males that are on the machine. Like I just, I just don't know. Man, actually um, bro, and hey, you, you'll you know, be surprised. You know, you know, Cud you know, Cudzy that went to state, he was on, um, he was on Project Runway. Who? Cudzy, Cudzy, he was, he was a Sigma. But I think he was only there our freshman year, and he dipped. Like, you gotta show me his face, man. I got a bad. I'm gonna send you his page. I would see you. Yeah. He's on the machine. He's That's on the machine. What's up. He, he was on Project Runway, I think, seventeen or sixteen, something like that. Yeah. Um, but he was on Project Runway. Um, but yeah, you don't see a lot of people that's just on the machine. Like you see people designing, whether it's um, 
whether it's uh, Adobe Illustrator or whatever, but you don't really see people on the machine. So that's why um, I think that I think that's the struggle. I don't want to say struggle, but that's the, the the difference in this industry as opposed to like you being in L.A. or in New York and everybody's a designer because yeah. everybody right. everybody can do everything. But right, um, right, it's, right, different, right. it's different when you it's different when you on that when you on that machine. It's totally different. I'm about um, to jump on my machine, but I'm a woman. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Listen, <laughs> so somebody saying fashion, fashion designers <laughs> will be the new rappers. I mean, they live like that. Uh, what has been your favorite mask you made so far? My favorite mask I made so far. <clears throat> um, I think some of like those black Louis Vuittons that I did, where I punched the holes, yeah. holes in it. And I put it's, it's like lined with uh it's lined with the filter and it's lined with uh um a mesh neoprene too. I think that was kind of dope. Um, or like the Adidas ones with the zip. But I mean, I, I have fun with all of them. To tell you the truth, and gotcha. It's something that's like something that's kind of like simple and quick. Um, let's check you out. Your work. Um, but the mask thing, I wasn't gonna do it, man. And then like it hit. I just like. There's certain things I just don't like. I, I try to just operate off of love. But if old girl hadn't been like, yo, I need this for my family, I'm getting ready to. to you would have uh, done it. Yeah, like I don't think, I think she really put put the pressure on me to like, yo, you need to be doing this. Yeah. Because like you, you have this gift. Because like I was just going to wait out the pandemic like everybody else. I didn't want to, you know, you got your, your hobby people that come in and making little 15 yeah. dollars masks and whatever. I wasn't going to do it until she hit me and she stayed on me. She sent me money. I'm sleep. She's still sending me money in my sleep. I'm like, I'm waking up like, damn, why are you sending me? She's like, I just need to get them to my family. I just need to get them to my family. So like, I think that, that, that part, like, like generated that love in me. Like, man, let me do this. And then, then from there it was like, oh, nah, he kind of cool. So let me see if he'll make me this kind of mask. So I think yeah. that's like, put me in that direction. But it's been a blessing. It's that's what's up, man. Man, one, one thing that I tell a lot of guys when it comes to sewing, I kind of mm -hmm. compare it to construction because that's what they can see a man doing, right? Right. I, I don't think there's no difference from what we're doing from construction work. I mean, you, you work with hands, you know what I'm saying? You're working with scissors, you're working right. with a hammer, you know what I'm saying? Depending on if you got to put in studs or, or whatever it is, you're right, working right. on the machinery that's dangerous, you know what I'm saying? So like, right. if they thinking about it like that, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's kind yeah. of like something like, okay, cool. It's something it's that they can, they can yeah. um, comprehend. Right, it's funny you say that because like, um, with my mentor, I met him in the summer. I met him in the summer of like 16. And I know you don't really sew with like a lot of leather, but he's, he's known as like the leather king because he worked with a lot of leather. He would get bigger in the winter time, like his back and everything from like flipping and wrestling and, and banging on the on the leather. Like all of this would just like widen up in the in the winter time, winter fall, because he's doing these crazy biker jaggers or these crazy yeah. like Sherlins or whatever. And it's just from flipping it. So like you would see that like when you say like work, like hard work, like when he's flipping that leather, you see him get big. And like I've been in there trying to like manage like yeah. it's a lot of work. It's, it's a lot, a lot of, work. of work, bro. Somebody said, Mocha Butterfly said, What's your favorite fabric store in NYC? The one with the best price. <laughs> <That's> my... <laughs> Listen, I only go. I only go to Mood if I absolutely have to. I don't. I listen. I love Mood. Mood owner. He cool when we walk by. Yeah. He, he speaks to me every time. He a super cool guy. But Mood is like Starbucks, man. Like, just cause it's there and everybody know it, don't mean they got the best coffee or the best right. fabric. Um, you know, whoever, you know which ones we go to. Which one? The one that that has the most organization. <laughs> Okay, I can dig that because too. Because trying to dig through stuff, yeah, I mean, I, I would too. do it, but the wifey ain't sitting there for the dig through too. a whole bunch of stuff. She needs it organized, so like, that's where we go shop. I'm a, I'm a funny dude. I'll be in there like, especially <laughs> if, I feel, if I feel like I can, I can barter with you. I can, listen, I'll be in there like this all the time. Like, hey, yeah. hey listen, come on, bro. Fuck with me, bro. I, listen, <laughs> bro, I, look, all I need is a yard and a half. You know, I'll be in there. Yeah, so I be in there begging and pleading. So whoever really <laughs> give me that that good price, yeah, yeah. Cause you they, gotta do what you gotta do, man. Listen, Cause they don't want to hear this. Man, I just go to move. They don't want to hear that. <laughs> they don't want to hear that. So they like, all right, all right, give me eight dollars a yard. Cool. Let me get let me get through real quick. Yeah. So like, do, do um, you like the fashion um district out here in, in LA? I've never been. Listen, oh, every time I go to 
Every time I go to LA, every time you see me in LA, I'm styling. Bro, you, you know? never, you know what, bro? I've never been. You I've gotta never take been. time. Listen, next time you go to LA, every time I'm in LA, I'm, I'm styling. It's like a 13 block radius of just yeah. fabric stores, bro. Ain't they no elevator. Better. Ain't no going to no small elevator going up in New York. Here is just all on the street, 13 block radius, and it's crazy. I mean, you'll find bargains. I got... like global leather. I like global leather in New York. Okay. I love global. AK is cool when they ain't tripping. Um, AK got some dope gems. Like, these are little small stores. Um, who else? I mean, you got you got Fabric House, the homie Ali at Fabric House in New York. Okay. Um, cool. I, I don't know about a lot of them places. I ne every time I'm in LA, bro, it's it's a styling gig. I'm in and out that joint. Yeah. Funny enough, I've never been in LA over 48 hours, dog. For real? Never, G. I That's did probably LA. we linked up since when I was Not, there. I'm telling you, listen. Um, I am James Anthony. He was mad last time I was, last time I was there because I was supposed to hit him. And bro, I was there. I I landed at eight. I landed at eight on a Monday, and flew out Tuesday at four, working. Boom, 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 in and out, in and out. So I, I never had a chance to like. I mean, I go to Roscoe's, but like, I don't. Like, that's it. <laughs> Randy's <laughs> that's Donuts. It. I've never been to Randy's. I've never been to Randy's, and it's yeah. right there. Yeah. It's right there. Um. But yeah, I, I like. I like. Um. I, I like those that are gonna show love. Show love. Let's see who else. Mood is expensive though. Mood is expensive, man. But Mood like, once again, it's a ticket. Again, this Once is again, a ticket. Mood, mood is similar to like if you think of somebody like like Greg Lauren when you talk about upcycling. Like once you got that name, you do yeah. what you want to do. You do what right. you want to do because because right. people gonna come running anyway because like oh this is mood. This is where they do uh uh project runway. It's mood. Yeah. They got their own sewing machines. They got all like you gonna run the mood. So mood don't care nothing about you. They gonna do what they want to do. Um, gotcha. AK yes look somebody say AK fabrics yeah I rock with AK. My man Abu I let my man Abu he growing his beard out like mine. In AK fabrics. Um, he's so disorganized. That's true. Let's see. Um, Vex, yeah. Uh, Jordan Jackson design, yeah. But they so expensive, bro. Are these all the places in New York? Yeah, these in New York. Look, somebody. Okay, we got back here. L.A. trip. Be we out. Yeah, we need to take an L.A. trip for real. Um, I'm trying to just catch up. Upcycle, upcycle only makes sense. Yeah, Mood has some nice fabric. Mood has some really nice. Stuff. It used to be another spot in LA. I mean, out here in New York called uh, the French Connect. French Connect. Like they, they were on an upper level, but he closed. It was that like sounded like was, it was. That sounded like it was lit. Yo, he was a real <laughs> like he would he would spend months. He would spend a month and come back, but he would have like the Balenciaga fabric. Like I'm not talking about like the monogram print type stuff or like. But he would have. <laughs> my, my wife says she's going to bed. <laughs> I'll be there in a minute, baby. <laughs> she. He he would um he would have like everything in these these like fabric houses out there. Yeah. Like he would actually have their fabric. So you would go in there and be able to get the ball main like linen or like he was he was wild, but he had to close up. Um where you get your garment to upcycle. Um CJ, I, I get my garments to upcycle from everywhere, bro. If you look on my page, well damn, it's not on my page. I gotta start posting more of my work. Um, you got this, to, bro. You gotta show them. This chick, this chick, um, back in Atlanta, she saw Savannah James, LeBron's wife, uh, with a blazer in the front and denim trucker jacket in the back. Um, we got the trucker jacket from Poshmark and the blazer from like a Goodwill. So like, Oof. I'll use Poshmark. So you can imagine like they were different sizes, so I had to like create a pattern to, yeah. to match and put it together like that. Um, but. I will. I would get stuff from everywhere. I love Poshmark because like, thrifting in New York is like super oversaturated and super expensive. So I can hit Poshmark, bargain, place a bid, get a little fifteen dollar piece, ten dollar piece, and like that's cool with me. Um, so I, I, I um, my upcycling pieces, I get them from anywhere, from my own closet. If I get tired of looking at something, I'll, I'll chop it up, chop it up, flip it, for sure. So, so um, a lot of stuff that you make, bro. Is it is it stuff that you just want to make, that you just creativity, and then you sell it, or do you have somebody hit you up? Both. So a, little, so a little bit of both. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Like when I did the Project Runway little like collection, 
um, it's like after I did my last interview with them and they sent me the email, it was like, oh, well, we selected you weren't one of them. I was like, cool. Soon as I got that that email, I started putting it up on my story. People was hitting me like, oh, I need that jacket. I need this. I need this. So I would sell it right away. So that yeah. came from me me already being creative, but also just similar to like the, the girl who saw the jacket that Savannah James had on. Right. She'll hit me and be like, yo, can you do this for me? And I'll be like, yeah, of course. Um, so it's a combination of both. Gotcha. Um, more so, I would say people reaching out because like my style is a little unorthodox. Yeah. So uh, it's like an acquired taste. So everybody's like, may not, they might think it's dope, but it's not for them or they're not like bold enough or daring enough to do it. So like, it'll be cool, but not for them, which is fine. And That's I appreciate tough. it. But um, mostly like sometimes people will just reach out like, yo, I need some pants. Or if I get an athlete, they'll be like, hey, I need these kind of, I need six pair of pants. Or something like that. So Okay. Man. That's how it goes. Bruh, it's it's been dope, man. Chopping it up, you know what I'm saying? It's especially somewhere from the same industry doing the same thing. So I just wanna say appreciate you. Appreciate your time. I appreciate bruh. you, bro. Yo, you a Leak, beast, bro. Leaking you a up. Beast. You be <laughs> killing that stuff, man. I need to listen, I need to I need to stop playing and make me a few of them jackets. Which which, which jacket? You got a couple of cold jackets. You just did something with like a wide peak lapel crop with the belt. That joint was hard. Life and then um, the, okay. the 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 trench you did was hard. Oh yeah, the that trench was hard. Did. That trench was like an old 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 pattern, bro. And if yeah, you I look at the it. if you look at the pattern, you'd be like, I ain't rolling. <laughs> yeah. So it, but a lot of men have like so like that like that's the thing I want to do. That's why we I, I want to do. That's why I'm, I will be doing more. Of these lives, so um, hold on. What wife is saying? You should do, do a course, course. Soda Academy. Hey, oh, oh, <laughs> she said, hey, just saying. You <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> hey, that, that, yeah, that, I that. should. I should. We were talking about a course. I need to do a, like an upcycling course to where I'm. Um, that would be fun. Where yeah. I can explain. Where I can explain how I upcycle, like especially with that, with that jacket. Like the jacket, for her, I did. I did it for a sweet ass price. I won't even say. Like my prices be super fair. Super fair. She sent me all the stuff. I was like, yeah, I'll put it together for you for this. So yeah. um, it was so much work that the price I told her was too sweet. But also right. love, I was like, look, I already told you what it, what it was. And it was right. fun for me. So, But I would love to have a course to where I can explain how where I'm taking a piece from upcycling and I have to cut it. And I might have to make a pattern out of something that's already been made into a pattern, which is like something you don't do, a little unorthodox. But then you match up the seam and you stitch it together. And then you surge it, and then it's like all something that. brand new. All yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that. I, I, I think that would be dope. I think that would be dope and fun. That well, like... you got you got wifey on it. She just said, let's lock it in. So if she's locked it in, it's official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I want to own. Um... Y'all got me motivated. I might go back upstairs. I got this trench and this uh this uh, uh parka I wanted to put together. I might. I've been trying. I cut it. Got trying it. to put it together forever. But um, that sounds um, fun, man. Wifey, um. Wifey started, she started sewing because she was like a bad student, you know what I'm saying? So she taught in the way that she could understand, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So like, and, and there's a lot of other people that learn that way too. So I, yeah. I, just, I just say that because, because you mentioned earlier that um, you're not sure if you could teach, but it's a lot of people that would comprehend the way, you know what I'm saying, you you explaining it in the way you Yeah, you I can see that. Taught. I can see that. Like, because the way I was taught was so was so simple I guess yeah like the homie and the homie to this day like I'll be in the studio like I've been his apprentice for four years um to this day he'll be like now nah, watch this and he'll show me a quick trip and it'll blow my mind I'm like I'm why I don't like no it it'd be those little those little techniques those little, those little, little techniques, techniques where he just do one quick fold and one flip and pinch and uh like so I'm like even when I sew like I see like I it's weird when I watch other people like even when I watch you like I know Wifey taught you, you pinning stuff, you putting your pins in there, everything nice and neat. Yeah. Big homie didn't teach me like that. Big homie's like, going. step on it. So I'm <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm so like, this. look, I'm over here like this, like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It, it all depends on what I'm working with. If I'm working with something real delicate, it's kind of hard not to hold it. But if it's like heavy, like denim or yeah, some leather yeah, or something, yeah. I probably wouldn't. You probably can't. You can't pin leather no way. Yeah, nah, nah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just funny because like how he taught me like it's just like how he knows and I guess it's like yeah. really time efficient because like I, I saw him make um three full length coats 
fur coats to bust rhymes in a day to get overnight into LA. And I was just sewing the lining, which was, it was great because it was like a Saturday. I showed up and he was like, bro, I'm glad you're here. You can sew these linings. So I'm cool. And you know, of course, the lining is pretty much the pattern. Right. Just, just the inside of it. So, exactly. So like that helped me learn. So I'm over there saving him time and learning at the same time. And he knocking out full three fur, full length coat. Bro, I done, I done seen, I done seen his videos. I thought he had a, a real animal in there one day. <laughs> he was going ham. Listen. I've been in like, I don't, I'm, I, this isn't to anybody about the Peter or whatever. Like, so I'm not opposed to like, I, I prefer real fur, real, real hide. Yeah. Um, but I've been in a furrier and I've been uncomfortable. That's Definitely. kind of places I've been. Like I've been in a furrier and been standing in that joint like, oh shit. Like, so. Bucked out. Yeah. So I've seen zebras, dog. Like, I've seen illegal stuff. Like I've seen some crazy, but some people will pay for it. <laughs> I haven't. I've never worked with a zebra or anything right. like that. But yeah. like I've seen, I've seen it, and it's like, it's crazy. It's a crazy world, especially because it's, it's somebody out there for everybody. So right. like, they'll buy it if, if if somebody wants it. Right, right, right. But shoot, man, I I don't want to hold you too much up, man. On a Friday. Yeah, I know um, my family looking for me. Like, where you at? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, bro. Um, but like like I said earlier, I want to do more of these just to show exposure and just have these conversations. Um, just so people that know that, hey, we just like you, you know what I'm saying? Like, my wife would say all the time, she wasn't born knowing how to sew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't born knowing how <laughs> right. to sew. You know, you just didn't go. <laughs> so, like, my, it's someone my homie just hit me. You. He said, he, he said, my homie just hit me yesterday. He was like, bro, how hard is it to, is it, like, how hard is it to make a button up? <laughs> I laughed. It was like, LOL. <laughs> Nothing is easy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you just get better at it. Exactly. Like, try it. Yeah, man. So um definitely um uh, any 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 of these comments you want to get to or you all you all caught up? Uh, I I appreciate everybody um in here. Yeah, animal things like it's it's a thin line between like the whole animal thing. I understand. JJ Scrooge is trying to sign up. Bistro, what's the craziest mash? You gonna see? Uh, I don't know. I, this the guy. Well, I mean, he's not selling himself, but uh, Sharon Barber has some some dope. But he does designer stuff. Um, I don't know, like. It's a lot of people out there that's really hard that don't that don't sew, but they have a vision and they know how to like. So I, I never like. Yeah. I don't. I don't. It's knock equally people. important. Yeah, yeah. I don't knock people who don't sew. Like, but right. you can't. I don't like to be compared to people who don't sew. And I don't like to be compared to people who scam. Gotcha. <laughs> That's what it is, man. I'm gonna let you go, man. And I appreciate uh, it, man. And, and and we'll definitely definitely get you hooked up so we can get you on Sword Academy, bro. Check out Nick of Time Textiles online. All right, bet I'll do that. Uh, recommend for trims, uh, uh, Batani, Pacific, Daytona. Um. Seal, Seal's on 39th, Daytona's on 39th. But yeah, that's Looking it, at your page, you're very particular. You have great, you have a great gift. Who is that? Jay Tanner. Who, Norris? Yeah, yeah, Norris is fire. Jay Tanner? <laughs> oh, no, I think he's talking to you. She's talking about you, right? Oh, no, man, he's talking about you. you don't, She's talking you about don't, one of us. Anyway, either way, it's good. You the one with the, you the, one with the gift, brother. <laughs> oh, you got it too, bro. You got the juice, man. I appreciate it, man. This, hey, this is fun. I got listen. I gotta pull up on you live, man. We we got to, bro. We got to. We got to do the event. We got to do some. We got to do some classes. We got a lot yeah. of stuff to do. We got to do a pattern, bro. We got a lot yeah. to do, bro. It's like we, we me and the wife, we, we 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 cooking up a lot of stuff, man. So um, I'm just gearing everybody up to what they gonna be seeing later. So like, okay, you know, I just want to share information, and there's nothing that I learned that I don't regurgitate and yeah. and give back. Because I had to start I had to start teaching people how to sew. I had to start teaching people how to sew way before I should have probably been been teaching. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. I didn't see nobody. And, and I feel like I, I don't feel like I'm in I'm in the position to. But yeah, like but, when I I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Sure. But like but like as I kept going, it's like, man, what do I get this information from? You know what I'm saying? Like who who and, and is and also you could you could listen to somebody with good information, but the pitch of their voice might throw you off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's so true, like that's true. you run into stuff like that too. 
Yeah. So I guess let I mean, and I and I do teach when I when I'm in these stores. Like when I was in, like the Puma thing was a workshop. Like it was a workshop. People came in. There was a a larger group workshop, and then Friday it was a small like intimate group to where people I actually let people jump on the surgery. Like some people never seen an industrial um uh like surgery. Like yeah, they never they never they've never been on a juki. Like yeah, juki is like. Taking that that Rolls Royce around the corner, so like. Hey, so check this out. So I was I was letting people jump on. Rashawn Jones, what's up, brother? So, the wife and I, we we have we we have two jukies. Well, they they in L. A. right now, uh-huh. but we have two. I haven't sewn on either one of them ever. Okay. Ever. Why? Why? You didn't want to try it out? I I, I wanted to try it out, but it's like when you're so used to your machine and you've been sewing. Oh. It's I just I, I never went to I, it. I don't understand that. I don't Damn. understand that. That's that's like that's like seeing that 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 Lamborghini in the driveway and you yeah. walk by it every day. Yeah. You and you walk by it every day. Now you're going to get in a nice car. You yeah. might go get it. You might go get in the Benz. But one 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 reason why though, because we have some really good. Like we don't have a basic. I know. I know. That's why I said Benz. It's like it's different. That's why I said Benz. You've got good ones. Like yeah, you got we got good some. Machines. That's I, why I, I said you, luckily I got the hand me down from the wifey, so I've so, only known a good. So this machine is what like I'm that. saying. This is what I'm saying. You you jumping in the, you jumping in the bins every day because you comfortable. Yeah, in the yeah, I get what you're but saying. You, but you walking by that Lambo. Oof. Like, Oof. I, I'm on a right now. I'm making masks on a on a heavy duty singer. Like, and I I love the heavy duty singer. I, I had a, a singer stylist that I tore up when I was doing this uh the the Missy Elliott for the VMAs joint. The little rubber suits that that they be, that I can't stand the rain joints. Yeah, they tore up my um that rubber tore up my machine and messed up my timing and it, and it, I I broke too many needles on the rubber uh-huh. like trying to do alterations on it. So like that was my little singer style. That was like my first joint. So now um. So the wife made a good point. We we teach on so machines. I'm still mad most, at Missy Elliott for that. We we teach on machines what most people can purchase. So like most people really can't go out and, and get that industrial situation. You know what I'm saying? But most people can get the, you know what I'm saying, the home sewing machine. That can do a lot. You know what I'm saying? But it does make it easier with that juki. I've I've, I've seen it in action. I mean, we we, we used to hire people come to the office and work on it, but I just just haven't been on it myself. Man, you got to listen. Jump in in the Lamborghini, pull the door down. Yeah. Take a ride, man. It's nothing like that juki. It's nothing like it. Yeah. It's nothing like it. You got to try that juki. I love it. Yeah. I don't have no space in the house for it, but I love it. But somebody said that uh, that heavy, my man Joy Jackson said that heavy duty. The heavy duty is hard. So my ho- my homie that um, L, yeah, who sold in Atlanta, she does a lot of like um, production type stuff. She's the one that actually called me to to get me on the uh, Missy Elliott gig for um, all the dancers and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, with 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 June Ambrose, she's the one that like plugged me in for the VMAs for that. So where yeah. I was a uh, assistant assistant on on with that. Um, but I saw her use a heavy duty singer and in my head, I'm like, why not? Cause it's doing all the straight stitch. Like that's right. what I need. It's just doing a straight stitch. Right. That's what the Juki, the Juki does the same straight right. stitch. I just need something strong. So like once, once I tore up my machine that, um, the stylist, which I think is like still in the trunk of my car. Um, I, I went and purchased, she, L, L is the one that put me on that, that heavy duty singer. Gotcha. And I love it. That thing is strong. And before that needle breaks, it'll stop. It'll, <clears throat> And it'll stop right before the needle breaks, so you know, like, oh, let me back it up, see what's going on. So, <laughs> yeah. And 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 the heavy duty singer at the time it was only like 120, 140 maybe. Yeah. And it's just a straight stitch, but it's a strong singer, and it's like it's really good. It's not pretty. It's like gray, it's like a dark a dark gray, um, but it's strong and it's good. Um, so I love that heavy duty singer. Yeah. I love it. That's what's up, man. Before we go, man, what's what's your favorite pattern? What's your favorite men's pattern? That's out. <laughs> you're you're one man's pattern, like, cause I know you don't do a lot of patterns. You do your own thing, but if you had to choose, what's one of your top? What's one of what's one of your top patterns mm. that you work with, actually? I mean, I guess I would really say any any kind of any kind of pant. Yes, sir. Heavy duty finger foot. Yeah, I guess any kind of pant pattern, cause like I can manipulate that so many. Oh, different ways. okay. Yeah. You have anything in, in particular? Some that you recommend or? Just like nah, just it, it, it can be a it can be a plain pant pattern, and I can I can manipulate it in so many ways because I know different waistbands and like I know how I like my stuff cut. Like I know I need my thighs and butt big, and I know I need like 
my, my calves a little big, but with like a small, like seven and a quarter opening because I like it real tailored at the bottom. Yeah. Um, but I can put pockets on it. Like I can leave, like I can make a pant and leave the crotch open and like go crazy with pockets all over it. Gotcha. Something like that. So any kind of pants. Any just kind of pants like, I'm a sneaker. I'm a sneaker guy. So like I need my, I need my, my sneakers to hit. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I got, you know what I mean? You show the whole shoe. And then, and or, <laughs> or like at the same time, I can take that same pant and make a short out of it. Gotcha. So like, gotcha. So I, I think like any kind of pant pattern, like I just don't, it can be a plain basic pattern. I can manipulate it. That's what's so up. I, I would say, I would say pants. Like I just love pants because I love sneakers. Okay. That's what's up, man. Well, I'm going to let you What about you? Man. What about you? What about you before we go? What about Me? You? I think I mentioned this before on um, Love to Soul podcast. I mean, you'll be a good guest. I mean, if, if you don't curse, because that's not that's another cursing podcast. Hey, listen. <laughs> I know. I Listen. I used to be. I used to, I'm a parent, first of all. <laughs> I'm, I'm messing with you, bro. I got, I got you. I'm, I'm a parent. I used, to, I used to work in education. <laughs> yeah. Right? I know how to tone this down. <laughs> yeah, 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 you good. You good. I know um, I, nobody. Listen, nobody code switches like me. Yeah, I can. If you if you go watch my GQ video, yeah. you see my GQ video. Oh, that's that? right. Yeah. Listen, I had I had I had the college voice in there, and I was I was articulating very well. Oh no no, you no you good you good you both definitely good. I had to get the joke off. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mentioned I mentioned on there it's a um. It's a McCall's bowling shirt pattern. Okay. And just the cut of it, like you, you already know when you make something, mm -hmm. it's not just making it because you can just right. make it and, and and do it start to finish. You can do it that fast, but right. the fit of it, you know, say so you right, might have to right. take a little bit in, you might have to take a little bit out, you know, and, and right. you don't want to keep doing, you know, what I'm saying seams all over again. So mm -hmm. that was that's a pattern that I can just. I can make start to finish, no changes, and it fits me like a glove. It's like one of my favorite patterns. It, it's uh, it's one of those patterns that I make when I have see, a you, you, on. You're yeah. a fit. You you're a fit guy. I'm not a fit guy. I, like my dad body is on a whole nother level, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm six two, six three, two twenty, bro. I got a gut. I got a a, a a booty and thighs. Like I just I'm not fit like you, so like I can't really everything I get has got to be altered. It has to be. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so we winding down. Oh, we winding down to the last forty some seconds, man. So um I want to appreciate everybody with all the questions that tune in for this long. We had a solid 50, 45 people steady through the whole time. So I appreciate whoever jumped on and jumped out. Appreciate off. everybody. Yep. And um, my, hey, I appreciate Tanner, forgive me, Tanner. I'm sorry. My bad. All right. I, all right, I, bro. I appreciate you too, brother. Hey, hit me, man. I enjoy this. Be easy. All right, bro.